Today's video, we're gonna answer the question, are rent ceilings fair? Now, this thing with fairness and all, I think I went through in one of my past videos, but we'll just go through them again, the perspective of rent ceilings. So, the definition of fair rules view is anything that blocks voluntary exchange. That is unfair. So, rent ceilings are unfair because we're putting a cap on uh, the, the price that people can charge and the price that people can buy uh, by housing it. We disallowed the, the chance for quantity demanded to equal quantity supplied. So in this perspective, rent ceilings are unfair. The definition for fair results view is a fair outcome. Fair outcome is one that benefits the less well off. And the fairest outcome is one that allocates scarce housing or scarce housing to the poorest people. Now in this case, rent ceiling is unfair because it doesn't generally benefit the poor. And that is why in both cases, fair rules and fair results, in the perspective of rent ceilings, they're both unfair. Now, rent ceilings decrease the amount of housing that is available, and this creates a bigger challenge for the housing market. So this causes that, and this will cause uh, the market to ration a smaller quantity of housing among people who are willing to rent housing at the rent ceiling. Now, when rent is not permitted to allocate, well, when rent is not permitted to, to be used to allocate scarce housing, other mechanisms are available and they include lottery, first come, first serve, and discrimination. Lottery, first come, first serve, and discrimination are pretty intuitive. Lottery is just like buying lottery, it allocates to the lucky, not the poor. It's like buying a lottery ticket for money. Uh, you get the money if you're lucky to win to win the numbers that you picked. First come, first serve allocates to those who get their names on the list first and not the poorest. Discrimination, it's based on the views and self-interest of the owner. So if the owner uh, wants a girl or a guy to rent their housing, then they're discriminating against, um, against the tenants based on their views or self-interest. But none of these methods are fair. So in principle and practice, rent ceilings are inefficient and unfair. And you can see that in this little diagram that I drew that um, with fairness, we get pennies. But what we really want is a bag of, bag of dollars. And that's our self-interest. So... In principle, self-interest owners and bureaucrats could allocate housing to satisfy some criterion of fairness, but they're unlikely to do so. That's why they have they want they're running towards the self-interest sign. And it's hard to make a case for rent ceiling on the basis of fairness. When rent adjustments are blocked, other methods of allocating scarce housing resources come into action and they just don't produce a fair outcome. And that's that's that for fairness. Uh, in terms of importance, I don't really think that the fairness it, fairness concepts are really that important. I don't really think that you're going to be tested on them. It's just something for, good for you to know, but I could be wrong. Now, let's move on. So let's talk about a labor market with a minimum wage. Now, the labor market is a market that influences the jobs that we get and the wages we earn. So here, you can see that I have two groups. We have the firms, and what the firms do is they decide how much labor to supply, and the lower the wage rate, then the higher the, or the greater the quantity is demanded by the firms. Now, these little guys here carrying the labor uh, labor word is us, you and me. We, are, we could be seen as the households and we decide how much labor to supply. And the higher the wage rate, then the greater of quantity of labor, quantity of labor is supplied. We all want to work for more money and if they give us more money, then more of us will want to work. More of us will accept that salary wage. 
Now, the wage rate adjusts to make quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And when government imposes regulations that makes it illegal to charge a price lower than a specified level, that is what we call a price floor. Its effect on the market really depends uh, crucially on whether the floor is imposed above or below equilibrium price. So this is really similar to what we did before with, with the inefficiency of rent ceilings. This is really it will get really intuitive as we go on. Now, minimum wage is when a, pr when a price floor is applied to the labor markets. And there's a couple of things I want to mention before we end the video. And that is if the minimum wage is set below the equilibrium price, it has no effect. The reason is because the price floor doesn't constrain the market forces, the force of law and the market forces are not in conflict. This is uh, similar a similar concept to the one we did with the price ceilings. Now, if minimum wage is set above equilibrium price, it has powerful effects on the market. The price floor attempts to prevent price from regulating quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So the force of law and the market forces are in conflict. So again, that is also very similar to what we did with the rent ceilings. Um, you can see here that, uh, where is it? Yeah, you can see here that I did the same definition and reasons, except for this is a price ceiling that a price ceiling below equilibrium price that causes a f powerful effects on the market. But for for the minimum wage, it's the price floor, and the pr and or the minimum wage is above the equilibrium price that causes powerful effects on the market. And just want to let you know that when minimum wage is imposed above equilibrium price, that causes unemployment. And I'll end the video here. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.